Hey guys, welcome to this channel that is economics at a glance. So guys, as you all know, we have covered the mock test one of agriculture production economics. So again, today here I'm with the mock test second series of agriculture production economics. We will quickly cover all the mock test series and then we will start the theory part which we have left. Okay, so let's get started guys. So first, first in the production function, as you know, what is production function? What it is, it is a mathematical expression of the production occurring in the field, okay? So in the production function, production is a function of that price, total expenditure, factors of production or none of this. What will be the answer? Obviously, we will do the mathematical expression taking the factors which are used in the production. So yes, the answer will be factors of production, okay? So the answer will be factors of production. Coming to the second number question, see, the basic reason of operating the law of diminishing return is that, what is the basic reason? Whether it is scarcity of the factors, whether it is imperfect substitution between the factors or both of them or none of this. What will be the answer? Think, think. Yes, both of this because Law of diminishing return, it has a basic reason for that is there is a always limitation of the factors, scarcity of the factors. And apart from that, there is imperfect substitution between the factors too. Okay, so this is the basic reason. So the answer will be both A and B, or you can say both I and second I. Coming to the third number question, which of the following explains the short-term production function? Well, I have explained very well in the lecture series what is short-term production function, what is long-run production function. Okay, so here the options are law of demand, returns to scale, law of variable proportion, and elasticity of demand. See, very clearly I have mentioned the differentiation between the law of variable proportion and returns to scale, as you have remembered in the uh, lecture series. So law of variable proportion, it is always for the short run production function. And while coming to the long run production function, it is returns to scale. It is just a definition I have captured from the lecture series only. So if you have still not seen those lecture series, you can go to the playlist I have mentioned in the description box. Okay, so coming to the fourth number question, long run production function is related to, see I have just said the answer. Law of variable proportion is related to short-run production function. And for long-run production function, it will be returns to scale. Okay. Okay, then coming to the next question. Question number five says, in which stage of production, a rational producer likes to operate in the short-run production? Okay. Well, whether it be short run or long run, always in the second stage, the rational producer likes to operate. Why second stage is a rational stage? I have completely explained in the three stages of production lecture series, okay? So coming to a six number question, law of variable proportion, it explains three stages of production. So in the first stage of production, option A, both MP, marginal product and average product, they rise. My marginal product only rises, third, average product falls, and fourth one, marginal product is zero. See, the first stage of production is everyone is rising. So we can say both marginal product and average product is rising, okay? This is an easy question. Okay, coming to seven number question, at which time all the factors of production may be changed? It's very obvious in the long run, all the factors of production get changed. Why? Because long run, there is no definite period of time, but short run, there is a very definite period of time. So in that period of time, maybe some factors are fixed and some factors are variable, but in long run, everything can be changed. So coming to the eighth number question, production function is expressed as dash. See, the options are here and the answer will be QX, that is our output, quantity output is equal to function of A, B, C, D. This A, B, C, D are the factors of production and this is your output. So output is a function of all the factors or, or we can say all the inputs used for the production. 
So this is your production function expression. Coming to the next question, see which factor among the following we find in the short run production process, whether it is fixed factor or variable factor or both. See, just I have told this thing that in short run production, we have both fixed and variable factors. But in long run, we have only variable factors. Why? Because in long run, anything can be changed. But in short run, we have both the fixed one and the variable one also. Because some, one, some inputs are there which cannot be varied. And some inputs there are there which are always varied. So in short run, both of them exist. But in long run, only variable factors exist. Okay, clear. Then uh, coming to the 10th number question, see, the cycle which increases first and after being constant starts to reduce. That is called APP, MPP and TPP, which it is. Which one it will be? Well, it will be all of this. Why? Because both the TPP, MPV and APP, all of them started increasing at the first stage then becomes a little bit uh, saturated or constant then starts declining. So it's applicable for all these three product curves, that is TPP, APP, and MPP. So your answer will be all of this. Then coming to 11 number question, which of the following is a source of production? Well, I have explained this land, labor, capital, and entrepreneur. There are four factors of production. So here our answer will be all of this because land, labor, capital, all of them are in the options, okay. Then coming to the 12 number question, law of variable proportion, it is related to both short run, long run, long run, or short run, or very long run. Well, it is a repeated question. We have already done this, that it is a short run product, short run law. The next question number 13, if all the factors of the production are increased by the same proportion, and as a result, output increases by a greater proportion. See, I have clearly mentioned these things. If all the factors, they are increasing in the same proportion, but the output increases by a greater proportion, that means it will be increasing returns to scale, okay? It will be increasing returns to scale. In the same case, if it, the Factors are increasing same proportion, but output is increasing by a lesser proportion, then it will be decreasing returns to scale. And if the factors are increasing in the same proportion and output is also increasing in the same proportion, it will be constant returns to scale. But now it is greater proportion, so it will be increasing returns to scale. Clear? Okay. Then coming to 14 number question. Which of the following is included in the money cost? Whether it is normal profit, explicit cost, implicit cost, or all of this? Well, the answer will be all of this. Because money cost, in money cost, we will include the implicit cost, explicit cost, and normal profit as well. How we will calculate that? We will, we have already discussed in the cost chapters. Then uh, question number 15. Among these four options, which of the following is not a fixed cost? Whether it is an insurance premium, well, it is interest, rent of the factory, and cost of the raw material, which is not a fixed cost. Well, it is cost of raw materials. Why? See, insurance, you it is fixed, all of you know that. And interest, this is decided by the bank itself, and it is also fixed. And rent of the factory, it is almost fixed cost. But cost of the raw material, it is varying because depending upon the government, uh, suppose government has uh, given subsidy or uh, like immediately the cost has been changed or you can, uh, you can take different variety of the raw material. So accordingly, the cost will be changed. Okay. So this among these four options, this cost of raw material, it is not a fixed cost. Okay. Coming to 16 number question. With the increase in the production, the difference between the total cost and total fixed cost, okay? When there is an increase in the production, the difference between total cost and total value, sorry, total fixed cost. So first, let me know, like, what is the difference between total cost and total fixed cost? Well, it is total variable cost because we know total fixed cost plus total variable cost, it is total cost. So the difference between this will be total variable cost. 
so the question indirectly asking here like when the production increases what happen to total variable cost well it will increase okay because when total variable cost increases then only we can think about like we are increasing more and more resources and when we will use more and more resources obviously production will increase okay then coming to 17th number question changes in the production quantity <clears throat> okay it will be both fixed and variable cost or only variable cost only fixed cost or none of this well it will be only variable cost just we have discussed in the 16th number question okay that our production increasing decreasing or any kind of changes it will be concerned with only variable cost if it is increasing our production will increase not every time but the changes are mostly due to the variable cost only or we can say variable inputs or variable factors only then coming to 18th number question what happens when production is shut down see production is shut down so whether it will be fixed cost increases variable cost decline then variable cost becomes zero or fixed cost becomes zero well the answer is variable cost becomes zero this concept i have described in the market lecture series like when in the production or in the industry the shutdown point arises at where so as you have remembered the the point where avc avc we are matter of concern is avc average variable cost okay when it touches the mr line that is the point of shutdown point or we will advise our industry that you should shut down okay so as you have remembered we have taken the parameter average variable cost so similarly here when the variable cost becomes zero here we can say the production in the case it is a shutdown thing coming to the 19th number question the alternative name of the opportunity cost is das well we have already discussed this this is economic cost then question number 20 the when average cost is decreasing what status marginal cost has as compared to average cost okay whenever you are in doubt of average cost just think the relationship between average product and marginal product the exact reverse will be with average cost and marginal cost okay so what will be the answer here the answer here will be marginal cost less than equal to average cost okay the way i have given you the trick i have given you just apply that if the answer is not right then let me know in the comment box okay just think the relationship between average product and variable product the exact reverse will be with average cost and marginal cost okay coming to the next question that is question number 21 which statement of the following is true see average cost we know that average cost is equals to average fixed cost plus average variable cost obviously because total cost is total fixed cost plus total variable cost similarly average cost will be average fixed cost plus average variable cost so it is very clear that uh, answer will be the uh, option 4 that is uh, average cost equals to average uh, fixed cost plus average variable cost okay then coming to question number 22 here the question is the average fixed cost at 5 units of output it is rupees 20 the average variable cost at 5 unit of the output it is rupees 40 so the average cost of producing 5 unit is what average fixed cost is 20 average variable cost is 40 so what is the average cost what it will be what it will be well the answer has come again in the disorder way let me see okay it will be 60 okay because we have told here that average cost is equals to average fixed cost plus average variable cost okay so here the answer will be by answer number rupees 60 okay then uh, for question number 23 with the increase in output the difference between the total cost and total variable cost okay when there is a increase in output what is the total uh, difference between total cost and total variable cost it remains constant why because the difference between total cost and total variable cost is total fixed cost right and in short run total fixed cost always remains constant 
so don't be confused because i have already discussed another problem like with increase in output the difference between total cost and total fixed cost it will increase why because the difference between total cost and total fixed cost is total variable cost here the question is difference between total cost and total variable cost so what is the difference here the difference is total fixed cost and total fixed cost always remains constant so your 23 number the answer will be it remains constant getting my point okay the question number 24 which factors are used in short run production process well it is bo both fixed and variable factors we have already discussed this so it will answer will be both a and b and the last number question the answer has already been shown okay let me see uh, the isoquant are equal to product lines cost lines and total utility lines and revenue lines well i have discussed this in the lecture it is the product lines okay i hope all the answers are clear to all of you so these are the 25 question series of the second mock test of agriculture production economics so thank you all I hope all the questions and answers are clear to you. Still, you have any doubt, you can uh, mention your doubts in the comment box. I'm there to help you guys. So now, very soon, I will come with the next mock series and all the uh, like uh, lecture series of agriculture production economics, still uh, which we have not covered yet. Okay. So this is all from this uh, economics at a glance channel. And very soon, we will come with our lecture series next lecture series till then stay with my channel and don't forget to like and subscribe my channel thank you